Hello and good afternoon everyone. I am Darshit and on behalf of Godrej Material Handling, I welcome you all to our next and 27th webinar from our Godrej Handling and Knowledge Series titled Role of AI and IoT for Material Handling Equipment. Before I move on to introduce our esteemed speaker, let me just revisit the core purpose of running this knowledge sharing platform that is built specifically for interlogistics domain. I would say it is uh, a Godrej way of giving back the knowledge to society and our industry that we have gathered in past six decades now. And I'm happy to express that again, the encouragement for continu uh, continuing this has increased with overwhelming response from you all. Coming to today's topic, in the age of the di dis digitization, where every little thing from Google Maps suggesting you the shortest road, uh, road, road, to an app that notifies a farmer about the health of his crop in real time. It's a no brainer that these technologies are changing the way we work by moving us towards safer and transparent work environment. In the past, we have, this, uh, we have touched on functional aspects of material handling equipment and interlogistics spaces. Today, we would see how smart technologies would make our material handling equipment more smart, safe and interacting interactive with AI and IoT. It goes without saying as how we could save on lives and cost by being safe and informed. And we are, and we are having uh, going to have a close understanding of these uh, of these uh, technologies from our esteemed subject matter, Mr. Vikram Rastogi, who is director and CEO of Half Lab Solutions Private Limited, Bangalore an IIT Kanpur alumnus and an entrepreneur with expertise in innovative hardware and software solutions. In his professional journey of 10 years, he is responsible for founding and leading Hack Lab since 2015, the company that leverages IoT AI technologies to move industrial premises towards safety and productivity. He would enlighten us on how these technologies are shaping industrial safety beyond human consciousness consciousness. Before I move on, I would request everyone to put in their questions in the chat box on the right. We shall try to answer them straight away or towards the end of the session. Please do not do not for, forget to write your name in the box above the Q&A se section that will help us to get back to you after the webinar in case we miss your questions. Uh, with that, I request Mr. Vikram to take over and wish everyone has an inf insightful session. Over to uh, Thank you, Darshit. Uh, good evening, everyone. This is Vikram. I am the founder CEO of HackLab Solutions. So, metal handling equipments are one of the core requirements for any industry. If you are looking at logistics, warehousing, manufacturing, construction, in any of the industries where you go, you will have the need of a metal handling equipment. And as we go ahead, there is more and more uh, requirement for these kind of machines. These kind of uh, equipments are being in demand for a long time now. And what we are going to study more today about is the artificial intelligence and the IoT part in these equipments and how artificial intelligence and uh, IoT is hand handling and increasing the efficiency and productivity of such equipments in the warehouse, in the workplaces that where these are being utilized and how they are also making it more safe and secure for everybody who is working in those machines and around those machines. So I will just start with the presentation. So intelligent working of such machines is very much required at work sites to ensure that such work sites are safe from hazards like collision. Uh, we have uh, some solutions which are available in the market and we'll be talking about these solutions in the presentation as we go ahead. So safety, quality, productivity. So these are three basic parts of an organization and all these three parts are interlinked with each other. As we go ahead, Safety and productivity are key features which are uh, being used in an organization. So if you uh, so these are the three basic pillars of an organization. Safety, quality and productivity 
are the three basic pillars of an organization. So the why safety is very important. Safety is important because if employees are working in an area which is dangerous for them, which is uh, not uh, secure from the, all the hazards which are there, the person who is doing the work will always be worried about what is happening around him. And uh, they will not be able to be productive in that kind of a dangerous environment. So to ensure that the person can focus on the task, can focus on the job that is there at hand, they, the environment in which he is working has to be safe from the various hazards that are there. So that is one of the basic requirement of uh, doing the task uh, in a productive manner, right? So apart from that, there is a need for uh, ensuring that we uh, have in, in, in a safe environment, people can be more productive. They can focus on the quality of the work rather than being worried about what is happening around them. Uh, in an unsafe environment, the goal of the organization should be to improve the safety so that once, uh, so uh, if the uh, operations are dangerous, then we, we will lose out on uh, a loss, uh, we'll lose out on time, we'll lose out on the morale of the workforce. So the organization has to make sure that safety is being maintained in an organization. So I will uh, talk more about the safety part right now. So in an organization, any death or any injury can lead to a lot of morale, a loss of morale, right? And this is not just a problem for India or the any particular industry. It's a global problem, and across the sectors, all the problems are face, all the uh, sectors are facing this issue. Every second, more than ten workers are uh, having some kind of a safety related uh, work related accident. So this is a global database uh, point that we have collected. Apart from that, so that means around 6,300 people die daily because of workplace accidents. So these are a lot of uh, people who are dying because of the accidents that they are facing on their work sites. And uh, in total, there are more than 370 million. So which comes to be around 31, more than 31 crore accidents happen. And uh, so this is uh, the reach of the whole uh, issue. So 31 accidents are happening, 31 crore accidents are happening yearly. So that's a huge number of accidents which could have been prevented and should have been prevented. In total, this leads to a revenue loss of more than 4% of the global GDP, which runs into trillions of dollars. So safety becomes a core feature for any organization to work on and worry about. So say 4% of the global GDP is a very huge number and there is a need for solutions which can ensure the safety of workforce in such scenarios. So what are the various hazards which are there? So before we get into that, let me uh, talk about the various financial aspects and various aspects of uh, the safety domain for various sectors. So warehousing and transport is one of the fastest growing industry in the world. So more than uh, Thousands of people are currently being employed, lakhs and, uh, lakhs and crores of people are being employed in this industry right now, and it is really booming in most of the areas. So one of the, uh, one fatality, if it happens in a warehouse or in the transportation sector, it results in a revenue loss of more than $1.5 million. So it's a huge amount of money that is being lost for each fatality that happens in that particular sector. And each injury that happens in that in the warehousing sector will result to a loss of around forty thousand dollars. So it's a, it's a huge amount of money which is being lost because of the various accidents that are happening on the site. Similar kind of numbers you can see from all the other industries like manufacturing, mining, construction. So each fatality or each injury, even a small injury, is basically. Uh, resulting in a huge loss for the organization and the number of injuries in these organizations can run into thousands. So we have collected a few data points from the industry and we have uh, here tabulated what kind of hazards are popular and what kind of injuries are popular on these sites. So here you can see that the kind of fatalities that happen so these are the various reasons for the fatalities that are there in an organization. 
so you can see transportation is one of the major and leading cause of fatalities that happen so mostly transportation incidents are uh, accidents that happen on road so 40% of the total fatalities that happen in the organizations are because of transportation issues falls and slips and trips so these are another major reasons for fatalities so people working at height people working on uh, areas where they can slip and fall uh, so they uh, their 17% of the total fatalities happen because of it 16% of the fatalities happen because of violence that happens it might be a man or a uh, animal for that matter but violence causes a lot of fatalities again 16% is a huge number then we have collision so collision is one of the other areas where uh, fatalities are happening uh, so uh, around 14% of the fatalities are happening because of collision that are that is happening so collision can be with any kind of a heavy machinery that is there on the site so uh, again a huge number 14% of the total fatalities 12% is because of harmful substances so these include uh, substances which can cause uh, like cancer and all uh, so these are uh, included uh, included in this particular uh, pie chart here so uh, harmful substances uh, around 12% so these include acids these includes various kind of uh, kind of elements which can cause uh, cancer a lot of other work related diseases and all so around 12% of fatalities happen due to it and only 1% of the fatalities happen due to overexertion. So if let's say a person is tired or a person is overexerted, so it results in around 1% of the fatalities. So, so these, this, is, this was the pie chart which explains how different, uh, different areas are uh, affected and how what kind of fatalities are happening in different areas. If you think about the non-fatal fatal injuries, so non-fatal injuries are the injuries where fatality is not there, but no, accidents are happening, right? So you can see that the kind of accidents that we are having right now. So there are accidents happening. Uh, normally, the largest number of accidents happen because of overexertion. So here you can see the causes of death and causes of injury are kind of not correlated exactly. So in this case, overexertion can cause a lot of fatalities. Or it can, will not cause a lot of fatalities, but it can definitely cause a lot of injuries, right? So here you can see 31% of the total injuries that happen, it happens because of overexertion by the employees. So, so this is again a huge number. If you think about the total number of injuries that happen, 31% is a very large number and this is definitely one area that organizations have to look at. The transportation, as we were seeing earlier, it was 40% in number of fatalities that were happening, but in non-fatal injuries, it is only 6.1%. So what it also shows is that if any person who is meeting an accident, there is a high chance that there will be a fatality that will happen in that particular accident than any of the other uh, scenario. So, so this means that these kind of accidents are very, very hazardous. So, there is definitely a need to ensure uh, by the organization that these accidents are reduced. The slip and fall again, it is around 27%. Here you can see it was 17%. Uh, here it is 27%. Violence uh, is in case of injury, it is again only 4% of the injuries are because of violence but 16% of the fatalities are because of violence. So again, uh, in this particular case, we can see that the chances of a uh, violence event happening may be lower, but if it happens, there is a higher chance of fatality happening on the site. So this is one of the uh, learnings that we can see from this graph. So the, the areas where injuries happen and the areas where fatalities happen are not always the same. So they are, there is a large difference between there is no direct correlation in uh, such scenarios, right? Then there is collision. So collision is basically uh, again one of the leading cause of injuries. Again, so it's around 26% of the uh, injuries happen because of collision with material handling equipments and all. And around 5.1% of the 
uh, injuries happen because of harmful substances so 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 these are the various causes of injury at a workplace and uh, we are looking for uh, there is a requirement for finding such solutions to such uh, problems and ensuring that the injuries as well as the fatalities are reduced in an organization so if we see there are two kind of pyramids which are very very popular in the safety domain so one is known as heinrich accident triangle so this is a uh, a theory which was proposed in uh, 20, uh, 19 to 1919 so it was one of the oldest theories in the safety domain and which kind of set up the whole safety paradigm in an organization so what it talks about is that the number of minor incidents and accidents if you reduce then the corresponding number of fatalities will also reduce so it talks about this triangle shape which happens on the site so in a site this theory talks about if there are 3000 uh, 300000 unsafe acts that are happening this will result in around 300 uh, 3000 near misses 300 minor injuries that 300 minor injuries will result in around 30 serious injuries and there were those 30 injuries will result in around one fatality so this was the uh, the ratios that were obtained by uh, doing a lot of study on the databases that were available earlier and this was one of the most famous triangle that was uh, that came up in this domain in the safety domain and even now if you go to most of the organizations they will have this kind of a chart where they will be tracking the kind of unsafe acts that are happening uh, in an organization or the number of near misses which are happening so these uh, two items are very difficult to track if you do not have a motivated workforce because not many people are willing to accept that there was a near miss in uh, at the area where they were working or somebody was responsible for that particular dms so this is something that is normally estimated by an organization and there are a lot of tools which companies are now trying to uh, estimate these at a much better pace so these are uh, these are basically uh, mostly estimated but we will be talking about some of the tools which we can use to get a better understanding of the kind of near misses and kind of unsafe acts that happen in an organization the other uh, the minor injury part is uh, mostly it is easier to track because if a minor injury happen or a first aid uh, first aid case happen on the site so it's easy for the organization to track it because in that particular scenario the person has to either visit a doctor or visit a hospital so it, so from here onwards it is easier to track from from an organization and this is where we get data directly from the government sources or the factory sources so minor injury serious injury and fatalities these are relatively easier to track right now but near misses and unsafe acts have been very hard and theoretical uh, and uh, historically we have been using, using some kind of an estimates to find these values the other triangle which is popular in the safety paradigm is the hierarchy of control so in hierarchy of control basically what we are talking about is what are the different mechanisms by which we can ensure the safety of the workforce in a particular area so these are the various ways in which we can uh, secure an uh, a process so first is elimination so what is elimination so in elimination basically you try and eliminate the process itself so if the process is hazardous so you try to eliminate that whole process and try to go for a process which does not have that hazard in it so you eliminate uh, the whole process from the equation itself for example let's say in some process you have uh, uh, to use certain chemical uh, to manufacture a certain other chemical but if that other chemical is can be manufactured through through some uh, tool which is or uh, some other chemical which is not hazardous you can uh, use that other ke chemical for it and you can eliminate the whole process which is there so let's say uh, so that will kind of eliminate the whole hazard which is associated for it substitution so uh, substitution would be you substitute one hazardous material with a non hazardous material so let's say in case of um, 
the refrigeration earlier, uh, some gases were being used which were prone to cause cancer and a lot of other uh, ailments in human body. Uh, if you substitute it with a kind of gas which is not that prone to uh, cause ailments in the human body, so that is a successful substitution uh, process for elimination of hazards, right? So if you are substituting one hazardous component with a non-hazardous component in a same in the same process, so that is the substitution process. So that substitution and elimination are considered one uh, the most effective ways of controlling an hazard. But normally because of various issues, it is very hard for people if the process is already set in a working plant or in a working organization. It is very hard to make these kind of changes because that involves a lot of capital. You have to rethink your whole process. You have to rethink how the whole structure of the whole uh, execution is happening, right? So they, these two are very effective, but not possible in an organization where already things are uh, deployed or already things are going on, right? So in those kind of scenarios, uh, engineering control is one of the best solution when the processes are already set and uh, the deployments are already done on the site. So in these, uh, in this engineering control solution, we will be talking more about them as we go ahead. We are basically trying to find out how the uh, controls of the uh, processes can be done so that we can ensure that the hazard is eliminated. So for an example, if you have a operation which is happening, and a human is supposed to work close to that operation. So how can you engineer a control system such that if a person comes in close proximity of that particular process or work, we can ensure that the person is safe from the hazards related to that work, right? So if let's say there are there is a uh, there is a clean somewhere, or there is some machine uh, conveyor which is running and you do not want the person to come in close proximity of the conveyor. So one of the uh, one of the basic solution in that particular scenario would be to use some kind of a machine guard kind of system. So if a person comes in close proximity of the machine, the machine will know that, okay, uh, there is somebody in the close proximity and the machine will automatically slow down or stop. So these are definitely one of the best solutions to control safety hazards in an already existing process if it is there. So engineering controls are considered one of the uh, best solutions for such scenarios. Administrative controls is basically something where you develop an SOP or a standard operating procedure where which is basically driven from the top. So in such scenarios, you are basically trying to find out uh, a procedure and it's a administrative procedure and you ask people to follow that procedure. If the person is not following a procedure, then you kind of uh, take some actions against them. So let's say if there is an area where the person is supposed to wear a helmet and enter. So one administrative control solution would be to put some stickers in that area. Some kind of uh, uh, SOPs have to be built in that area. And uh, if a person is found to not follow the rules, then you kind of uh, give uh, uh, like you ask them to follow the rules and all right or you punish them. So so those kind of administrative processes is what is being talked about. So it's mostly like if you do a task, how that task has to follow, what are the policies, what are the different ways the task has to come. So that is the administrative control aspect of uh, this particular uh, uh, of the control uh, of hazard kind of a use case. So you basically have procedures and people have to follow those procedures. And if they are not following the procedures, you have some correction method to train them or to ensure that they are uh, following the rules and procedures of the organization. So administrative, though good, it's uh, kind of lacking in a lot of things because still a human aspect of it remains in uh, there and it's very hard to for anybody to prevent um, until unless there is a oh, like uh, you have to really really have an administrator on the side to ensure that things are happening on uh, the side properly so that is that becomes like again uh, a costly process a lot of times people 
mistakenly do not follow it and all. So, so these are the uh, still issues with uh, which remain with the administrative control system. And uh, PPEs are basically primary uh, protective equipment. So these are devices like helmets. These are devices like uh, uh, safety uh, harnesses. So these are the areas where uh, in such areas, let's say if you want people to be protective. So these equipments are being given to the person and the person is supposed to just carry them and uh, they are uh, supposed to be safe from uh, some of the hazards which are there. So let's say if a person is wearing the harness and using the harness properly. So you have to somehow uh, and if he's using the equipment properly, so then he will be safe from falling down. So these are very basic equipments which are given to each of the workers, but there are a lot of issues with PPEs. First of all, you have to ensure that the person is using them properly or not. And second is you have to also ensure that the uh, PPEs are uh, like uh, working in proper condition. So it's not always effective way of stopping a hazard. So even if you have the best PPEs for, uh, that the person is using, there are still a lot of chances when the person can get into some kind of an uh, issue. So uh, it, so if a person is working at height, so even if the person is wearing the safety harness, you have to ensure that the person is hooking the safety harness and using it properly for you to ensure that work at height is happening properly or not. So there are a lot of issues where uh, PPEs are not effective and a lot of areas where PPEs have been not effective, especially uh, and but they are mandatory. They are useful as a last uh, ditch approach to uh, ensure the safety of the worker. So, so this is how the pyramid is made. So elimination substitution are the best solutions, but not always feasible in an organization. Engineering control is the best solution possible in an existing process. Administrative control is where you have a pro set of rules and procedures which are laid down to pro prevent any accidents from happening. And PP is the last ditch effort that you can put in. It's an equipment that you can provide to your worker to ensure that he is safe from various hazards. So these are uh, the five mechanisms by which you can prevent hazards uh, and, uh, and prevent your workforce from uh, facing such hazards. So engineering control, as we were talking about, is one of the uh, best mechanisms that uh, is available to us right now to ensure the safety of the workers in an existing process. So uh, what we do in engineering control is we design a equipment or a process in such a way that the chances of a person coming close to a hazard is reduced or coming in close contact with the hazard is reduced. So I already gave you one example where a person is working in close proximity with let's say a machine and uh, in this particular warehouse example you can see that a lot of people are working a lot of machines are operating so one of the basic way of ensuring that there is no collision happening is to put a barricade so in this particular case you can see there is a barricading that is done uh, the forklift is working in its own zone uh, no person is allowed to work in that zone and the humans are working in their own zone so these are definitely one of the basic ways by which you can prevent an accident from happening. But in many areas, these are not possible. In many areas, it is necessary for the machine to work in close proximity with the worker. So in such a scenario, the best ways possible would be to use some kind of a sensor on the machine to ensure that if a person comes in close proximity with the machine, the machine can detect it and uh, the operator or the machine can take an action to prevent an accident, right? So these uh, are these would be engineering control solutions that we can put on machines to ensure that there is proper uh, safety maintained in a in an area. So as I said, they operate on hazard isolation principle. So you are trying to isolate a hazard from happening so you isolate the worker from the hazard and because of that isolation the chances of the worker getting affected by that particular uh, hazard is kind of eliminated the method of uh, control hazards either at the source or at, in transmission and so this is also self-explanatory 
and so one of the benefits that we can achieve because of engineering control is that the technology that we are incorporating for uh, man managing the let's say in this particular case this machine or in general for any control process need not be just for controlling the machine for the safety scenario but it can also be used to upgrade the operations of the whole facility as well so it can be used in uh, conjunction with the quality and the productivity framework of an organization and both uh, of them will definitely get benefited because of this engineering control solutions that we are providing for the safety use case so uh, so in uh, general normally the engineering control solutions will be more costly than giving a pp to the operator or providing an administrative control procedure but in long term it will increase the efficiency of the organization it will increase the uh, the throughput of the organization it will increase the quality of work that is happening in an organization and as we go ahead there will be a lot of areas where uh, these uh, control solutions that we are building will add a lot of other values rather than just the safety aspect of things and one other achievement of an engineering control solution would be that because once the engineering control solution is deployed it can protect multiple workers at a time so in this particular case you can see that once this barricading is done it can protect all the people who are there in this area so you don't need to worry about these people if the barricading is done properly so that gives a long term solution to your problem and over time the operating cost also of maintaining and managing this particular solution is much better than let's say if you provide each of the person with a separate pp so the, uh, over time these uh, water engine control solutions are being built uh, are adding a lot of value to the organization and they cost less than providing a administrative or a uh, pp control solutions right so how the industry is getting transformed so now as we enter into the gen generation where ai and iot are becoming more and more popular in the industry so th these uh, are being included in the safety aspect and the engineering control solutions as well so i will give you a brief idea of what iot is what ai is and how both of them are working together to make artificial intelligence of things which is aiot solutions so iot is basically a way of connecting your devices to the cloud to or to other devices in the network right so similar to how our phones are now connected uh, we can call other phones and we can also uh, contact uh, send our data to clouds like google clouds and all so in a similar fashion devices are also now connected so de devices can now communicate with other devices which are on the same in the same area or they can even communicate with other devices in other uh, uh, areas as well over the internet or and they can also send the data to a central server where the data from all the other machines uh, all the other devices are also getting and getting logged so so this is one of the core feature of internet of things so internet allows you to communicate with the cloud servers or other devices and that communication adds a lot of value to an organization so, and what is ai so ai is basically some ab the ability of a digital computer to take up a task and perform it as we would have done it as humans would have done it right so for example let's say a, per, uh, a computer can take the feed from the camera and see what exactly is happening as a normal human being would have been doing it so if a, uh, if you assign any person uh, to look at a video feed let's say a cctv footage and detect if a person is coming or not so earlier we used to have security guards who used to look at the camera footage and see what exactly is happening but now the same process can be done by a computer so a computer can analyze the video feed which is coming in it can process the video feed which is coming in and as the feed comes it can take actions on top of it so that's one of the biggest advantage of using an ai so you don't need a human being to do the task now the machines themselves can do the task 
as it goes. Uh, so you might have seen a lot of examples where artificial intelligence is being used. Even if you go to any app like even Netflix and all, and you might be seeing Netflix is giving you recommendations based on what you have already watched, right? So there also there is an AI which is sitting on the app which is generating your uh, the recommendations that uh, are there for you. So that's an AI is being increasingly used in all uh, scenarios of life now, and uh, this is going to continue and this is definitely going to increase over the use of AI is going to increase over uh, the years to come, right? So uh, we talked about IoT, we talked about AI. So what is AIoT? So AIoT is when is where we mix the advantages of both IoT and AI. So as I was saying, AI is uh, about machine learning what is the process and then making improved decisions on based on what it has learned, right? And IoT is about adding the connectivity aspect of things. So you are your devices are connected to the cloud. Your devices can communicate with other devices. You can do a lot of uh, calculations on the machine, but you can also do a lot of calculations on the cloud where all the data from hundreds and thousands of devices is coming and getting collected. And from there, the kind of data that you are generating adds a lot of value to the organization. So you can, for example, uh, check how many people are there in an organization at that particular moment, in which areas they are, what exactly they are doing and what kind of activities they are doing and whether the activity is linked with the process that they are working on, right? So all that is possible now with an artificial intelligence of things solution. So in this, you combine the AI part as well as the IoT part and it transforms the whole industry. So, so we are going to talk about some of the AIoT solutions that have really transformed the safety industry now. So as you can see, in a warehouse kind of a setting, there are a lot of hazards that are possible. So there are there is a fire and smoke, which is definitely a big problem for many of the warehouses. There is a problem of intrusion. So there might be theft happening in the area or there might be people who are coming from outside and stealing stuff, right? So, so that is one of the big area. Then there are loading and loading points where you need to monitor how long a truck or any vehicle has taken uh, and how long it was inside the premise, how long it was uh, being loaded for, what is the, uh, whether they were loaded with the proper goods or not. So those kind of um, monitoring is very much needed in a warehouse. Uh, obviously there is, in some warehouses, there is a height work also where, especially you have multi-rack warehouses where goods are placed on uh, heights and you have to take out those goods. So there are, uh, there might be people who are doing that, but in most of these scenarios, there are machines which are doing that. So you have machines which uh, will be tracking the goods, uh, will be taking out the goods and then taking it to either the loading area or for a, uh, some other process, right? So machines or humans will be doing a lot of tasks at height also. You will also maybe depending on the goods that are being stored, there might be issues of with leakage or issues of the uh, like, let's say there are liquid or some other solid also even for that case uh, that can leak out of the uh, the uh, parcels which are stored. So th that's one of the major risks again for a warehouse. You also would like to monitor your workforce and see what exactly uh, is happening on the ground, how long a person is doing a task, how they're moving around. So these kind of things uh, are very much prevalent in these kind of issues are very much prevalent in an organization, especially a warehouse uh, kind of a setting. And uh, it is very hard for a person to do it. Like you cannot have a person uh, want monitoring each and every aspect of the organization at a regular interval. But if you have a computer which can monitor what exactly is happening by looking at the various CCTV camera footage, that kind of solves your problem, right? So th these, this is one of the so, uh, key solutions where CCTV cameras and the AI running on top of those CCTV cameras 
is very very useful so and i will be showing you some examples of how they can be used right so uh, using an ai so if you already have cctv cameras in your premises the ai can convert those cctv cameras into a 27 24 by 7 uh, sentry so it's kind of like a, you have a person sitting on uh, the site and watching each of the cameras individually right so that's one of the major advantages and major areas where ai aiot has been uh, like becoming very very popular now so the camera is basically see so i will show you how it works so basically you have an ai server so this is an ai server where your ai will be sitting you have various camera feeds which are coming in so the camera feeds can be from directly from the ip cameras that you already might have in the organization as part of your cctv network or we can deploy more ip cameras on the site and they generate video feed which is taken by this particular ai server and it monitors all the feeds that are coming in from the cameras right and the ai server is basically a very high processing engine so it has an ai uh, element to it so which monitors what exactly is happening and whenever it finds that there is a violation let's say a person is trying to enter any area where they are not supposed to enter it will generate an audio alert at that moment itself so the idea here is like when the auto announcements happen the person who is making an uh, making that error or making that violation is also alerted about it so in a sense that this kind of hinders the person from making an error this is especially useful in a safety kind of a scenario so let's say in some areas you want to ensure that people are wearing proper uh, pp or proper uh, vest before taking uh, some action let's say they are trying to work on an electrical uh, system and before wearing uh, before working on that they have to wear gloves or some other kind of a arc suit or some pp to ensure that uh, if there is any kind of a hazard which happens or any kind of incident that happens their life is protected so this particular a camera can be watching what exactly is happening on the ground there and if it finds that any person is trying to come near to an electrical socket or come near to a point where they are uh, uh, supposed to be a, some kind of a safety uh, pp the camera there, there is a speaker which is attached with the camera and in that speaker an announcement will be made like please do not operate any electrical equipment without proper safety gear so this announcement when the person hears they will definitely take an action and this kind of this kind of improves the whole culture where you ensure that the person who is on the ground is aware of it it's not just about monitoring it's not just about capturing the data but also about telling the workforce that what is correct and what is incorrect so this whole uh, announcement system we have uh, seen on the ground that this adds a lot of value and this is something that we definitely recommend if you are going for this kind of solution to have apart from that obviously the whenever evaluations are is generated it sends the data to our cloud so as it is an iot solution so it will capture the data and send the data to a cloud system which can be on any kind of a server so it can be aws it can be azure it can be any other server for that matter and as it there like so from the cloud we process what kind of evaluations are coming and from there the data can be sent to all different uh, ways by which we can alert the people on the ground so let's say if i want to send a message to the supervisor so there can be a telegram or a sms that can be sent or an email can be sent or if there is a specific dashboard which is available on the ground so that can also be shown on the dashboard like what kind of evaluations are happening and where it is happening so these are uh, this is one of the key mechanisms by which we can communicate with the people on the ground and with also the management which is there or the uh, manager who is there on the site so apart from that uh, because whenever let's say because we are using an ai model to detect a violation many times it might happen that the ai is detecting something which has 
some issue with it so maybe it is detecting uh, four people but it is missing out on one people because of low lighting condition so in that kind of a scenario it is very important for the user who is checking what exactly has happened on the ground to give a feedback to our system so where our system will then correct it and using uh, so there is a model training server which will automatically uh, detect uh, what the user has said we will train on it uh, so the user will tell that okay this was the problem and then we will train on uh, that problem and update our model so after updating our ai will be updated and this will ensure that this problem if it sees again uh, it will no longer make that mistake so this is the feedback loop which is very very important in any kind of an ai setting because ai is a learning mechanism that is there so in case you are using for any kind of an you are going ahead with any kind of an ai uh, system it is very important that you have this feedback loop in place so that over time your model becomes much more accurate and as you go ahead it becomes much much Uh, the accuracy of your system will become close to 100%. So, so this is one of the key features that is there in any kind of an AI enabled safety solution or any AI solution for that matter. So, so this is uh, how a normally a AI solution is implemented with CCTV cameras. So, this is uh, an example of what all can be detected. So, here you can see there are a lot of forklifts. a uh, lot of uh, different parts of the forklifts are there like forklift mass you can uh, see there are people working there are people working with no gloves there are people who are operating the machine who are doing uh, various operations they are uh, moving the mass they are wearing helmets they are moving uh, different uh, knobs and all so so you can see here you can see that uh, it detects various uh, like the person is not wearing any safety vest uh, so so this is how and the feed which is directly coming from the cameras can be monitored and uh, in real time so yeah so these are the uh, various algorithms that are prevalent for uh, so these are the various things that we can detect using cameras so here you can see we can detect for uh, like if a person is wearing a helmet safety mask safety shoes safety mask face mask safety harnesses arc suit so these are uh, like basic items which are anyway needed in most of the scenarios fire and smoke whether how many people are inside how many people are outside so these uh, these are normally the basic items which are needed in most of the organizations and these are listed in category 1 and these are uh, so apart from these we have other uh, other kind of modules which are normally can be used so there can be uh, like detections of fire extinguisher detection of ladders detection of face mask detection whether the person is running so these are uh, a little bit more complex algorithms that have to be incorporated but these are definitely possible so detection of whether a animal or a bird has moved inside or outside a uh, pre defined area right so so these are all very very useful algorithms but these are tough to build on and uh, in a warehouse kind of a setting or in most of the workplaces so is some kind of a customization is needed to make these modules work on the ground and these are category 3 ones are uh, very very tough problems that we uh, have seen on the ground which can be solved using camera so one is let's say if a person is you you mean uh, using any tool like a hammer or any other uh, tool which is uh, supposed to be used let's say at a particular area or in a certain way so that also can be detected using uh, the camera so there are a lot of ergonomics related things that can be detected using the cameras and all detect if a person is opening a valve or closing a valve closing a joint doing certain operations so these again are relatively tougher problems which are uh, which we have also solved using camera so as you uh, go ahead more and more 
such uh, such will be uh, such kind of problems will be solved using cameras now whether the person is smoking or chewing tobacco so this is one of the major uh, aspect of uh, cleanliness if uh, you look at most of the organizations you might see certain areas which are very dirty because people have thrown uh, either uh, after the cigarette butts which are lying around or uh, they might have spit in some areas or they might be uh, putting wrappers of the tobacco that they are chewing in some areas so there is a huge need to identify uh, such actions and uh, using cameras we can detect such actions apart from that uh, people talking on smartphones or using smartphones so this is one of the major cases of accidents as we are going ahead many times people when they are driving or when they are uh, even doing some task they are doing it along with their smartphone so they might be driving and they are using their smartphone or they might be just uh, working on some task and their smartphone would also be active and that creates creates a hindrance and it's basically one of the biggest problems that most of the safety officers are seeing on the ground also so detecting whether the person is using the smartphone or texting or talking to somebody on a smartphone is also uh, solvable using the camera system that i just talked about so uh, the camera solution is very very useful but the issue with most of the camera solutions is that it's an administrative approach it is most likely not able to it will not be able to prevent an accident from happening in a sense that we can give feedback to the operator uh, feedback to the person using uh, the cameras that we deploy on the site but until unless the person follows the sop we cannot ensure that it uh, will prevent an accident from happening so to prevent an accident from happening we need an engineering control solution so camera based aiot solutions are mostly an administrative control solution they are uh, till so far they are not in a game where they can be used as an engineering control solution as the system improves and we can uh, probably have more and more additional uh, components that can be added with the cameras and the accuracy of the a model can reach to a level where we can 100% uh, like we can say whether an event is happening or not and then we can link it to the manufacturing process or any other process that is happening on the plant then we can uh, say that it becomes an engineering control solution but so far whatever uh, the state of the art camera solutions we have seen on the uh, sites are mostly around an administrative control solution approach but as we go ahead as the ai becomes more and more popular it will become uh, more and more an engineering control solution and which is what we will be talking about now so this is the level 2 transformation that is happening where more and more engineering control solutions are being developed using ai and iot uh, so one of the use cases that i am currently talking about is collision with heavy machinery as we had discussed earlier it is one of the major causes of both fatalities and injuries in an organization so uh, finding a solution for such kind of a hazard is one of the major goal for any organization so in an organization there might be three scenarios where collisions might happen so a collision might happen between a machine and a man it can happen between two machines or it can happen between a machine and a structure so so these are majorly the uh, collision issues or collision points that are uh, happening on the site and there is a need to find solutions for all the three uh all the three aspects of collisions right so to eliminate such we basically deploy sensors the sensors are deployed on both the machine as well as people and i will be showing you some uh, a small video after this which will make it crystal clear as to how such solutions work but the idea if i talk in brief would be about in uh, the sensors being deployed on the machines which are communicating with the other machines that are there in the surroundings which are detecting what exactly is happening in their surroundings using cameras or some other sensors and then if any of the sensors detects that there is a, a chance of collision between either let's say 
if a person has come in close proximity with the machine or a machine has come in close proximity with other machine these particular devices are supposed to take an action first action that they can take is inform the operator that there is a person nearby but what we have seen is that many times it does not work as i was talking about earlier it becomes like an administrative control solution where you give a feedback to the operator but the operator may not respond to it so in the, uh, the such kind of scenarios let's say if the person is not responding to the alerts that are being generated the ideal solution would be to have the system itself take control of the machine and stop the hazard from happening right so that's that's a complete solution that if we deploy on the side it becomes uh, 100% uh, sure that if a collision is about to happen our system will be able to prevent it and it will eliminate such collision hazards from the side so so this is uh, one of the key areas and key transformations that we are seeing on the uh, in the industry many many mhgs are being deployed with such kind of sensors where we can not just monitor the safety aspect of the machine but we can also monitor the other aspects with respect to productivity uh, like who was operating the machine uh, how long he was operating the machine with what kind of uh, operations the machine were doing and whether the machine was op optimally used and how long it was used uh, we get all that data on a individual level right we uh, so apart from that we can also log all that data and generate insights on a monthly weekly and daily basis saying that how was the uh, behavior of the person who was driving it how he was driving it how productive that person was how long the machine was under maintenance how productivity of the uh, machine or how much is the productivity of the machine and all so everything can be calculated and given to you as a end user so this is uh, the complete architecture of uh, what kind of solutions are available so as i was saying so in case of collision you need to monitor what exactly is happening around the machine so there are two ways to monitor it so first is using sensors that are put on the machine itself and they do not involve sensors external sensors be mounted so this is normally used with either a camera or a lidar or uh, both integrated so these sensors are mounted on the machine and they in real time see what exactly is happening around the machine and if they detect that there is a person in close proximity with a, either of uh, either the machine or any other machine is in close proximity with it so it can prevent uh, the accidents from happening by first alerting the operator that there is another machine or another person in close proximity and if let's say the person is not taking an action and not may probably not slowing down or not stopping the machine the system itself can take an action and stop the machine to prevent the accident from happening so so these are these cameras that are mounted around the machines to detect uh, this particular scenario apart from that there are some other sensor nodes that we are uh, we have uh, seen on the machines being deployed to ensure that there is no collision happening between two machines and this happens with a high level of uh, accuracy uh, there is a connectivity module in a normal um, this kind of a setup which collects all this data and sends real time updates to the upper management about what kind of issues people are facing on these uh, on the ground and all there is an access control module which monitors who is controlling the machine and how the uh, control is happening on the ground so this uh, basically ensures that only authorized operators can operate a machine and any unauthorized operator will not be able to view or uh, access or use the machine uh, that is there and uh, there is an impact sensor to monitor how the person is monit uh, operating the machine if the person is driving in a rash manner the sensor will detect it and it will generate alerts so these are the various uh, modules that are mounted on the machine and uh, whenever any kind of a alert is generated it generates a alert to our cloud system as well and that is basically getting logged in uh, the, the database which is there and also we are sending real time violations alert to the supervisor so we can monitor a lot of uh, lot of activities like uh, apart from collision we can monitor the behavior we can monitor the productivity we can monitor the location 
we can uh, do geofencing we can create heat maps of what kind of uh, violations are happening in which areas it is happening we can monitor the productivity a lot of such scenarios uh, can be covered using this particular kind of solution yeah so i will just play a small video for you our solution pedestrian alert system an alert mechanism designed to warn the workforce of the industries working closer to heavy machinery here we targeted the most common industrial hazard the collision hazard a sensor is worn by the worker and a sensor is mounted on the top of heavy machinery and the collisions can be avoided by stopping the machine through an automated system before it gets too close to the worker. The system can work with all kinds of industrial machinery like forklifts, EOT cranes, reach trucks and any construction vehicle. As shown here, the machine doesn't move when the worker is standing near to an EOT crane, but as soon as he crosses the emergency range, the machine starts moving again. Similarly, we have conducted various tests on construction vehicles. Whenever the machine comes close, an audible alarm is given to the operator. Our system is built for all such industrial applications where workers work closer to heavy machinery and at risk of collision hazard. Our solution, Collision Avoidance System. This solution is based on the machine-to-machine -machine interaction and establishes an automated mechanism to prevent the collision hazard. As you can see when two different vehicles come within the emergency range, the sensors mounted on them initiates a command and the machines come to a halt. Our solution, anti-crash system. The solution is based on the idea that there could be external agents like obstacles in the path, an industrial machine without sensor, a worker without wearing the sensor helmet. An amalgam of litter sensor and a camera sensor is mounted on the top of machine and via AI image processing. When an obstacle is detected in the path, the machine stops, thus avoiding collision hazard. Here we can see a forklift moving in reverse direction, avoiding accident and coming to a halt, as soon as it comes within the emergency range of the obstacle. Our solution, seat belt interlock, this solution focuses on the on one of the major SOPs of vehicular safety, seat belt. The engine can start only when the seat belt is on. Without seat belt, the machine doesn't start, even when the driver inserts the key. Our solution, helmet interlock. This system is specifically designed for the helmet SOP of industrial safety. Workers wearing helmet compulsorily before operating any heavy machinery has become a prerequisite. Here the vehicle turns on, only when seat belt and helmet is put on by the operator. Our solution, biometric access control. This solution ensures that only authorized operators can operate a particular machine. Focusing on security of the machine, it uses sensors like RFID, keypad or fingerprint for giving access to the machine. This system can do real-time monitoring of the machine and can store the data through IoT cloud integration. Our solution, rough driving crash control. In this system, an impact sensor is mounted on the top of a machine and the sensor is inactive if the driver is driving within the allowed speed limits, thus avoiding speeding accidents. However, as soon as the driver tries to overspeed, the sensor activates, stopping the vehicle and sends an alarm message to a supervisor through cloud integration. The machine would now need supervisor's biometric access to continue further. Yeah, so, uh, so as I had explained earlier, so all the data that we collect from various sensors that we deploy on the machine is getting collected on an AI, IoT platform. So the platform basically is uh, collecting all that data from the various sources, various sensors which are there. And from there, there is an admin an interface from where you can monitor what exactly is happening. The, um, upper management will be able to monitor what exactly is happening. We can monitor different aspects of a system. We can monitor the health and safety aspect like whether the machine has been uh, working fine, whether there was some issue in the machine, whether uh, there was uh, some violation that was done, uh, the geofencing was violated or some other violations happened on the site. 
we can also monitor the uh, various other parameters like whether the mhg is uh, optimized or the utilization of the mhg is sufficient or it is underutilized or what kind of issues are happening on the uh, side because of which it is underutilized it is because of the operator that is it uh, happening or it is because of some other uh, site related issue that uh, because of which the mhg is not being utilized right uh, so apart from that whether uh, the uh, mhg is being used properly and whether the capex that was uh, put in uh, the uh, buying that mhg or using that mhg whether it is justified or not so all those kind of details can be visualized and seen on the dashboard which is there on the site so these are the various parameters that we can monitor we can monitor like how long the machine was on uh, whether the fuel is properly being uh, used or not uh, monitor uh, we can monitor the fuel at all the uh, levels we can detect if an impact happened we can uh, monitor the various parts of the machine if there is any kind of an issue we will be uh, notified in real time that there is some issue with certain part of the machine which can be used for uh, setting up the schedule for maintenance of the machine as well uh, access control and ensure that only authorized operators can operate a machine what are the various uh, hours for which the engine was on uh, what was the oil temperature that was there for the engine uh, coolant which was being used uh, whether it uh, crossed a particular threshold or what if there is any issue you will get a real time notification for it so these are uh, the various item uh, parameters that we can see on the site as well and then there is definitely a dashboard on which you can see uh, what exactly is happening you can see that the mhg is moving around uh, in which area it is there and how long it was uh, running and how long it was switched off so all these kind of uh, items are also available for you to see on the site Uh, so that's it. Uh, yeah, if you have uh, any other questions, I would like to answer them now. Yeah, uh, thank you. I mean, I mean, this is an eye opener for us, Vikram uh, 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 and uh, and I'm sure it is for everyone. The way you uh, took it from the basics, uh, how uh, you know uh, the safety is seen in the country and how it is being followed, and uh, you. Took over to AI and how it is being applied uh, everywhere, being applied. And this is means you know I could relate this to uh, the black box that uh, uh, aeroplanes have got. That how yes. it has happened and before we means you know before this uh, technology we were not able to uh, find uh, find out until unless the cameras were come. But still the main co cause of the uh, accidents or any mishaps that were happening it was uh, not uh, identified properly or diagnosed properly but thanks to all all of this and thanks for uh, enlightening us as we are running short of time we have got a lot of questions i'll take few of them sir okay sure, uh, sure. So, yeah uh, so uh, there's one question that if we move to autonomous mhes uh, will it not eliminate the chances of any mishap due to absence of any human factor this is one of the questions yeah so if you move for autonomous uh, mhe operation then definitely it will eliminate as i was saying it's uh, in a safety kind of a scenario uh, in the pyramid there are uh, elimination substitution and engineering control so if you go for a fully autonomous warehouse where everything is autonomous and it is the where humans are not needed it, you are kind of eliminating the humans from the equation right so that's obviously going to be more secure than uh, any engineering control solution that we are developing so right now the solutions that we are talking about are the engineering control solutions uh, where you ha already have a process you already have a warehouse and you want to ensure that you have a proper safety in such warehouses so in that kind of a solution how will you uh, deploy these kind of AIoT solutions on the set. Yes, and uh, an autonomous uh, MHE is itself a part of. Uh, from the start, it's a part of IoT. I mean, I would yes, say, yes. say that it's an IoT. Yeah. Yes. So the second question is, uh, can IoT solution be retrofitted to my existing fleet of material handling equipment? Definitely. So, so that's one of the areas where uh, the solutions that I have showcased uh, are being used on the site. 
where already you have a process which uh, is already set right and you want to deploy some solutions which can make it more safer so the solutions which i have shown so far are being retrofitted on such machines uh, so, how easy it is for the forklift operator to bypass or remove safety uh, sensors? Uh, so, it's uh, it's basically uh, not very easy for them. Uh, the issue is uh, many times uh, the operators we understand are not eager to have these kind of monitoring tools. So, what we have seen that many of the solutions that even what we are providing, we are ensuring that if there is any kind of a bypass that happens, the um, upper management is notified about it. So as you can see, uh, because the data is all collected on the cloud. So on the cloud, you can monitor what exactly is happening on the machine. And if you are not getting any real time updates from the machine, you we generate a notification to the upper management or the maintenance people to say that, OK, there is this particular device which was supposed to be operational, but it is not operational because of all the because some issues and then the team can go to the site and monitor what exactly is happening and even the systems that we are deploying on the site they are kind of very closely linked with the operations of the machine so if they kind of bypass it they will not be able to more operate that machine for uh, for their own use so, interlock. yeah it's a kind of an interlock so okay. it's really hard to, yeah okay so uh, can camera using iot detect impending collision between MHC and racks and sound an alarm because that's where most of the yeah. uh, things happen. Yeah, racks yes. and MHC. Uh, so, so you can do it. So uh, you can put cameras on the machine to do it. The issue with uh, putting it on the uh, using the CCTV cameras and doing it is the latency. So normally the CCTV cameras which are uh, put on the uh, site are uh, sending the data to a central server. And from the central server, the cameras have to detect that there is some kind of a violation or some kind of an accident that is going to happen and in uh, they are then going to send it to the speaker, right? So the latency of that whole process becomes a challenge. So we want the collision avoidance to work as fast and as uh, quickly as possible before the accident happens, right? So ideally such kind of devices have to be put on the machine itself. And uh, some of the devices which I have shown uh, as the level two feature. So these kind of devices are camera devices which are mounted on the machine, which can monitor and which can give you an alert if there is kind of uh, some kind of an accident that might happen. Okay. Yeah. So how are a forklift distance covered and location monitored? Uh, so there are uh, different ways you can do it. One is using GPS. So normally, let's say if your forklift is being used in an open area, so then GPS becomes a very useful technology in that kind of a scenario where a GPS signal connectivity is uh, easier to obtain. So using GPS, you can monitor how long the machine has moved, what was the speed at which it was moving, where, what are the areas it has gone, what are the areas it has uh, uh, entered, and what are the areas that it was supposed to go and didn't go. So all that can be monitored. In areas where GPS is not uh, like uh, present or it is inside in an indoor environment mostly. So we have built our own set of solutions. We call it RTLS solution. So and uh, you can search online. There are other companies also who might offer similar kind of a solution. But our solution, what it does is it can monitor in real time uh, the location and the speed of the machine in an indoor environment where GPS is not available. So that kind of uh, ensures that you can monitor the location inside the warehouse or inside any plant environment as well. Great. OK, so uh, could you discuss one industrial use case use case where uh, of machine learning integration with IoT? Uh, sure, so an example. I mean. So uh, so let's say let me talk about this particular use case now where we are uh, talking about putting a camera on the machine right to detect if a human is present in a uh, field of view of the camera and then stop the machine when it comes in close proximity with the machine right. So in this particular use case uh, what we have is we have uh, we are whenever we generate a violation here uh, which is get giving uh, an alert to the supervisor. 
so there is a need there might be a need sometimes that we are generating false alerts so it might happen ai systems whenever we deploy an ai system it's mostly 99% accurate and there is a 1% or uh, 2% chance of giving a false alarm so if that uh, alert is generated so what we have is we have a mechanism by which the person on the dashboard can select that okay this was a wrong alarm and it can be again used to train a model and then it will be fed back to the camera system again so the camera will learn that okay i made a mistake i uh, made saw that this was the uh, issue and i reported this as a violation but it was not a violation so once it detects that it can uh, it will be retrained and from the next time onwards it will not make that mistake so that so that kind of a uh, the uh, so that basically these are all iot devices it's all connected by a 4g or a wifi network so once any of the cameras or any other uh, smart uh, system if it is there it detects that there is some kind of a mistake it will learn from it and that is the machine learning part fantastic so uh, before we call it a day uh, there is a feedback link i request everyone to uh, fill in that and uh, you know let us know how the, how uh, did you like it and uh, what other topics you wish to uh, uh, wish us to have here and um, i i would like to thank you and we are privileged to have mr vikram sir uh, here to enlighten us with uh, the, the technology of ai and iot and with this uh, i take your leave sir thank you darshan thank you thank for you, having thank me you.